today we're going to talk about five benefits of doing pressurized fermentation. Maybe you are researching, want to get into pressurized fermentation, don't know if uh, you're ready to uh, plunge up the extra money for an extra fermenter, but you could, uh, of course, use a keg. And I'm just rambling, but five benefits, maybe more than five, but I mean, five makes for a good thumbnail. So five benefits of pressurized fermentation. Let's get started. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. I've been fermenting under pressure for quite some time, I have a lot of videos about it. I have links to playlist down below. I have at least three Q&A videos about pressurized fermentation, you can check it out if you, if you want to. But, uh, and I think I'll like mention some of these benefits in those videos. But let's get started, five benefits of pressurized fermentation. Benefit number one. Benefit number one of doing pressurized fermentation. I'm going to stop with the finger because if I go over five, it's going to be a huge problem. So oxygen. Keep the oxygen out of your, or you, of your beer. And, and of obviously the fermenter, because when you ferment under pressure, you have an overpressure in the fermenter. I'm, I'm, I think I'm thinking of the bubbles, but you can ferment in a keg or a keg menter also, of course. And there are some other stainless steel uh, versions also. But keeping oxygen out will mean that your beer will stay good much longer and that's a big benefit. Speed. We speed up the fermentation. Not just because fermentation is under pressure, that won't drive the, uh, the speed, but as you can bump up the temperature, the yeast will work faster. So if you're doing a lager at 18 degrees Celsius instead of like 10, 12 degrees Celsius, of course, it's gonna ferment fast as ain't gonna swear. And uh, if you ferment uh, an ale at like 23 instead of 18, yeah, it's gonna go much faster. So, benefit number two, speed. <music> benefit number three, and this has a little bit to do with the uh, number two one. When we are fermenting, especially when fermenting lagers under higher temperature, uh, the yeast won't produce like the uh, rotten egg sulfur <laughs> compounds. So that means that the conditioning time will be much lower also. So you don't need to log your loggers for months. Two weeks is, is fine, of course we will try it before that. Most of the beers are better if you just chill them and leave them for one week, I would say two weeks. But uh, that's a quick logger. You can ferment it in a week and condition in two weeks. That's a big benefit of uh, pressurized fermentation. <music> benefit number four. I think we're on four now. You get in carved beer, right, from fermentation. So that means that you can actually serve straight out of the, uh, the vessel if you want to. Some people are concerned about getting off flavors from beer sitting on the, uh, sitting on the yeast. Personally, I, I, don't, I, I don't get that, but uh, the best way is that you try it yourself. You do get a little lazy, because I can just ferment. Uh, I just fermented uh, a beer in a shabby, and when it was ready, I just yeah, put the vessel in my kegerator, and uh, it's uh, cold crashing now as we speak, and I will just hook it up beer ready to go. I would of course not take it to like a party uh, with the fermenter in that. Uh, if I fermented in it, that would like stir up the yeast, then I would, would then keg it or bottle it or whatever you want to do. Next one. Number five, and it's gonna be more than five. I realize that, so uh, stop with the hands. Stop with that. But if you found value in, in this video and what I do, like, subscribe, share, 
and all of that. I have channel membership, Patreon, just buy me a beer, all links down below. Together with this link to a uh, seal transfer video, because number five is super easy seal transfer, yet again, keeping oxygen out. It's so easy with doing pressurized to pressurized vessels. Oh, man, I, I think I, I, I do like pressurized fermentation now because I'm a bit lazy. It's much, everything is so easy. Let's jump to number six. Number six, self-purging vessel while dry hopping. Yes, as your beer is carbonated, when you release the pressure and you open up the, the fermenter, the beer will off gas. And I have a video on how to not dry up under pressure and how to do it. I will link to that video down below also. But once you open it up and pouring hops in, your beer will off gas. And if you, of course, if you add anything else also, but your beer will off gas so you keep oxygen out. That's a really good benefit of uh, doing pressurized fermentation. I like to dry hop when at the end of fermentation, when it's just a little activity left when the Krausen is falling and if you're using a transparent vessel this is super easy to just look at it and I do love the transparent vessels you can see what happens during fermentation of course I, I really enjoy my keg mentor also and just use a keg for precious fermentation but you're getting spoiled when you can look at the fermentation and how it's going yeah I have, I have more. Let's jump to the next one. Yes, yes, yet another one. And uh, I did, I did bring a tripod to the forest, but I didn't get a release plate. So I'm doing handheld. How am I doing? Comment down below. This is a big one. No suck back while cold crashing. So know what you have in your bubbler, star sand, uh, hooch, water, and you won't suck in air into the fermenter while cold crashing either. So back to that, keeping oxygen out, but that's super important. But it's so simple, just take off the spanding valve and uh, chill it. Or leave, leave the spanding valve, I don't care. But it's done its thing. Yeah, no suck back. Nice. As I said, it's yes, everything is just easy. I have another one. Adding liquid without opening the vessel. Yes, super easy. Uh, maybe you want to add. Uh, gelatin, maybe you made a hop tea, maybe you made some sort of tincture to it. Super easy, uh, not gonna go through it. I have a video on how to do it. I will link to that one below also. Let me see if I can squeeze some other tips here also. Should we just do a conclusion instead? Because it seems like I can go on for hours, but it's, it's interesting and fun to ferment under pressure. It's simple, it makes great beers, and beers that last longer, and it's just easy. Don't be afraid to start pressurized fermentation. Just try it out, see if you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and all of that. If you like what I do here, I have Patreon, channel membership, just buy me a beer. All links down below, check out the other videos. Dog turns out. It's super hot and my arm are killing me. Cheers.